quick question. Who wants some trivia? Welcome to the No Dunks NBA Trivia Show, where the only thing you can win is my utmost respect. I'm your host, J.E. Skeets, and alongside me, my co-host and scorekeeper, it's J.D. Hello! That's who's in charge, but let's meet today's contestant on Who Wants Some Trivia? He's a 38-year-old podcaster from Mississauga, Ontario. He loves the Calgary Flames and some good composting. He's the brown to my green. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tass Mellis. Tassie! <laughs> Oh, I'm honored to be on your program. Honored to be called the Brown to your green. <laughs> and uh, it's fitting for some reason that I'd be the Brown. It, it's, it's such a prestigious program to be on. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> Chas, it says here in my notes that you once broke your femur playing softball. Can you believe it? What? What a wild tale. Yeah, I was running around third base. <laughs> Trying to put the rounders up 16-1 as opposed to 15-1. Why didn't I just chill between second and third? Why, you know, play a little base to base. Have a little respect for the beer league opponent. Yeah, and I cracked that beer. It was a clean break. In two. Fully recovered, though, by now. I don't think so. Oh. But, but yeah, I guess. Excellent stuff. Don't, don't move like I used to there, Skeets. Well, let's get into today's trivia theme, Tass. Last week... The Toronto Raptors started celebrating 25 years of existence with their first of six 95 Rewind home games during the 2019-20 season. The game featured a throwback court, decked out in the team's classic purple, white, and red, and the players were sporting those retro-style jerseys that included the team's iconic red dinosaur. It was all pretty awesome, and even the bare-naked ladies were there. I know you love the bare-naked ladies, Tass. In fact, Mm -hmm. let's hear a little Brian Wilson right now. Lying in bed, just like Brian So that's our theme here for today. All of today's questions are tangentially related to the inaugural Raptors season and the year 1995. There will be no bare naked ladies questions. Ah. I'm sorry, Tass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tass, are you ready to play Who Wants Some Trivia? Yes, I am. All right, JD. Why don't you take us through the scorekeeping rules? We will start with seven multiple choice questions, Taz. You'll be awarded two points for every correct answer you get without using a lifeline. One point for every correct answer using a lifeline and zero points if you get it wrong. So use those lifelines. They are your friend. Yes, Taz, you're going to want to use these. These questions are not going to be easy. The three lifelines are... The ejection lifeline, where I eliminate one of the incorrect options that could help you out. The gimme some mo lifeline, where I give you a little hint about the correct answer, maybe steer you in the right direction. And the final lifeline is the phone a friend lifeline, where I phone one of my friends for some help. The good thing is, Tass, your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. So, you know, likely that you're going to get somebody that you even know to help you out if you use the phone a friend. Two more important notes, Tass. Don't be a Tom Gugliotta, all right? You can't use Google to find the answers. Gentlemen's rules here, scouts honor, and listeners, play along at home. Keep track of your score and see if you can beat Tass and let us know on Twitter at No Dunks Inc. All right, those are the rules, Tass. Are you ready? Yes. Can I be a Dave Bing? Oh, uh, can I use Bing? Can I use Bing? Can I use Bing? <laughs> that went right over my head, but no, you also can't use Bing. <laughs> okay. And don't ask Jeeves. All right, first question. <laughs> The Raptors' first ever regular season game was played on November 3rd, 1995 against the New Jersey Nets at the Sky Dome. Alvin Robertson scored the first points in Raptors history, hitting a three to give Toronto the very early 3-0 lead. But I want to know, Tass, who got the Raptors' first ever assist? Was it A, Ed Pinckney, B, Carlos Rogers, C, Damon Stoudemire, or Z- D, Zantabak? <laughs> D, Zantabak. I almost said Z, Zantabak. <laughs> oh, yeah. The obvious choice would be Damien, Damon Stoudemire coming down the floor, finding Alvin. But I believe there was a few passes on the play. Now, this is all obviously just a, a total guess here. Okay. But what's the point of using a lifeline in this situation? I mean, to eliminate one answer? Well, are you Don't torn really between two guys? Yeah. I mean, that might help. 
well, yeah. Can That's you picture good, good Alvin point. Robertson hitting the three? You can picture the three. I can. I yeah. can. I don't know where the pass came from. I don't think it was from Damon and John Tabak. Highly, highly unlikely. It's probably from Pinckney or uh, who's the other? Oh, Carlos Rogers. Mm. Yeah, one of those two. So if I was to eliminate, yeah. can you eliminate one of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> I will eliminate. What? Are you using the ejection yeah, lifeline? Y- yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, the ejection yeah. lifeline being used. I like it. Use these lifelines. All right, we are going to eliminate a Ed Pinckney. Give me Carlos Rogers for the assist. <laughs> That is incorrect. Ah, wow. If not, no way, it's Jean Tabak. It is Jean ah, Tabak. That is ah. right, which is crazy. He wasn't really known as a passer. I think he averaged no. 0.7 assists per game over a six year career. But the, the ball, you're right. You were right about the ball getting kicked around a little bit. It went into the post to Jean Tabak. And he did like, he got sort of doubled. I don't know why they were doubling him, but a little cross court kick out from the block to Elvin Robertson for that three on the first position. Do you think he deserved that assist? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> okay. Elvin catches it in rhythm and knocks it down. Yeah, yeah that's a All tough right. one. Right. That's a tough hey, one. It's huh? okay. It's okay. I don't, I don't feel bad about that one. All right. So let's get to question number two. The Raptors finished their inaugural season with a 21 and 61 record task, although they were one of the nine teams to defeat the 72 and 10 champion Chicago Bulls. The Raptors somehow won that game 109 108 despite playing just seven guys in the game. Who played the most minutes in that game? Was it A, Doug Christie, B, Oliver Miller, C, Tracy Murray, or D, Damon Stoudemire? Sweet mother of mercy, this isn't an easy answer. <laughs> um. Yep. I'm going to eliminate the big O, Oliver Miller. Okay. It just doesn't it doesn't seem right. Now, I have Tracy Murray in my head because I see him celebrating the win. Um, and so it definitely could be him. It obviously could be Damon Stoddard, right? And it could be Doug Christie trying to stick in as many minutes as possible out there. Ooh, in the 40s. In the fo- <laughs> um, so many minutes. I've got a life. I've got a You got two lifelines, yep. And I've got, uh, what's the other one? Uh, you got the, uh, give me some mo, a little hint I could give you, which could help hint you. Hint it up, hint it up, uh, I'm fine with that. Wow, okay, Tass is you th- using the give me some mo lifeline. Your hint, Tass. After a solid 95-96 season with the Raptors, this player signed as a free agent during the summer with the Washington Bullets. That said, he would later return to play for the Raptors in 2001. I should have gone with my gut, it's Tracy Murray. <laughs> That is correct. Oh, wow. Wow. That's all right. Hey. That's all right. Hey, I use a lifeline. I'm just, I just don't want to be as bad as Lee Ellis. Okay. I listened to the first episode, and I just won't be as bad as that guy. <laughs> okay. That is, uh, that's, that's one that's point. That's one point. You're on the board, Tess. Congratulations. Oh, right. Good stuff. Yeah, Tracy Murray played 47 minutes in that game where the Raptors beat the Bulls. One more minute than Damon Stoudemire, and uh, seven more than the Big O. The Big O played 40 minutes in that game, um, which is crazy that they beat the Bulls. Brendan Malone, you crazy mother. You crazy, you crazy. All right, he's got one point. We're on to question number three. The Raptors' top draft pick, Damon Stoudemire, was named Rookie of the Year in 1995-96, averaging 19 points and 9.3 assists per game. But Tass, who finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting that year? Was it A, Kevin Garnett, B, Arvita Sabonis, C, Joe Smith, or D, Jerry Stackhouse. Well, I think our TV days really helped me out with this answer because I do believe Arvita Sabonis finished second because we were going through last year, we were going through the uh, the Euros to win Rookie of the Year as Luka Doncic won it last year. Uh, and I do recall guys like Manu and Arvita Sabonis being second in Rookie of the Year voting. So I'm going to go with Arvita Sabonis, final answer. Final answer, Arvita Sabonis. That is correct. Well done, Tass. Way to pull that from the memory bank there. Yeah, the old graphic. Who made that graphic? Do you remember that? Who made that graphic? (laughs) You? No, I'm just just Uh, curious if maybe Art made it. I don't know. Um, Yes, Arvita (laughs) Sabonis, 31-year-old center. 
at the time, received 17 first place votes. Mighty Mouse, Damon Sotomayor, he got 76. So he ran away with it, but you were right, Tess. Savonis coming in second as a 31-year-old center there with the Blazers. Good What's stuff. my score, JD? Yeah, what's you he got at? three points, Tess. Wow, wow. Killing it. All right, he's on fire. Two in a row. Question <laughs> number four. Let's head back to that Raptors franchise opener. It was obviously a star-studded affair in Toronto that night. But who threw the ceremonial tip-off? Was it A, Dan Aykroyd, B, Celine Dion, C, Kathy Ireland, or D, Jeffrey Naismith? (laughs) You have one lifeline left, and that is the phone a friend. Dan Aykroyd, uh, Celine Dion, Kathy Ireland, or Jeffrey Naismith? Who threw the ceremonial Jeffrey tip-off? Jeffrey Naismith, huh? Wow. Um, yes, it seems like a bit of a forgettable moment. Because I don't remember it at all. Now, if Celine was doing it, I would remember that. <laughs> um, who? Uh, Dan Aykroyd, Celine. Kathy, Kathy Ireland, the uh, Kathy Ireland. supermodel. Yeah, yep. right. And Jeffrey Naismith. Got Jeffrey Naismith. Um, I don't think. So are we? Are we? Is this a, uh, a grandson of of Naismith? Is that what we're saying here? Is this a joke? I mean, you can't give me that I answer. Can, I, I, I would love to give you that answer, but I can't. Okay. Um, <laughs> is this a joke? <laughs> is this a, some sort of joke? I'm gonna go with Jeffrey Naismith. That is correct. It is yeah. not a joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeffrey Naismith, the great, great grandson of James A. Naismith, the Canadian who invented the game of basketball. Yes, he threw the ceremonial tip. I'm so happy you didn't ask for the hint on this one or that you had already used the Gimme Some Mo. My hint was this person wore a tie and glasses during the <laughs> ceremonial jump ball. I had no idea what no, to put. Uh, I would have picked Dan Aykroyd for sure. Yeah, maybe. Now, when you, you said Jeffrey Naismith. I couldn't think of James Naismith's first name. Mm. So was, yeah, that was... Here's the crazy right. part. Here's the crazy part. Kathy Ireland was in attendance. She's ah, in the crowd. Um, and so was David Hasselhoff. Mm. Yeah. Well, were they was, together? No. no. They were They were just there, ready for the Raptors' first ever game. But, yep, Holly- Jeffrey Naismith throwing it up. Hollywood North. <laughs> and also, I found this weird. Let me just share this little nugget. So it's Zantabak and Yinke da- Yinka Dare. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Dare. Um, they, he does, they do the ceremonial jump. Yinka Dare wins the tip. Isn't that weird? Hmm. Wouldn't you think the Raptors would win it? You would think. <laughs> I just found that so <laughs> odd. Like, Tabak doesn't jump. Yinka Dare just grabs it. Very, very strange. So All right. That's weird. So how many points is Tass up to? Tass has five points. He's one away from taking over Lee. Wow, the all-time the leaderboard. leaderboard. Oh, excellent. Excellent stuff. All right, well, let's find out if you can keep this streak going. Question number five. 1995 was not only a good year for Canadian basketball tasks, it was a great year for movies. Yes, we're going off the court for this one. Braveheart won the Academy Award for Best Picture, but which flick was solely 1995's biggest box office hit? And I'm looking for worldwide gross, okay? Was it A, Apollo 13, B, Batman Forever, C, Die Hard with a Vengeance, or D, Toy Story? Just for the year, 1995, biggest box office hit, worldwide gross. Just for the year, 1995. As soon as you use the word worldwide, Apollo 13 starts ringing in my brain. Just Mm. because because of the association. Have you seen all Uh, these movies? uh, Braveheart, Apollo, uh, Die Hard. Batman Forever, Die Hard. Toy Story. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, Toy Story, I'm sure, made a lot of money, too. This is... Um, you know, it's it's a good opportunity to call a friend, but I think they would be sort of in the same boat that I am, which is mm. in guess mode. Right, and then you'd be leaving a point out there if you if you did guess it correctly. If you used right. the life one, yeah. And go right, yeah. yeah, and I don't feel that desperate quite yet. Um, so from this vantage point, we're going... Apollo 13, final answer. That's incorrect. Hey. 
That's incorrect. Mm. Yeah, this was a tough one. According to Wikipedia, the Die Hard sequel, which was the third film in the five-film series, Die Hard with a Vengeance, grossed over $366 million worldwide in 1995. That was $5 million more than Toy Story, excluding the gross from sub- subsequent re-releases. That's why I was really stressing slowly that 1995 year, because Toy Story would go on to become right. the highest-grossing uh, film of that year. But Die Hard with a Vengeance, yeah, that's a tough one. What tough happened one. to Apollo? I don't know. Yeah, people just weren't, <laughs> weren't, weren't digging the astronauts worldwide, I guess. Did well at home. Did well in America, I'm sure. All right. That was a tough one. Question number six. Back to the Raptors. In 1994, Tess, a year prior, of course, to the franchise's first game in 95, fans were asked to submit their preference for the team's new name, which resulted in a final list of ten options. Which of the following did not make that final list? Did not. Was it A... The Beavers, B, the Grizzlies, C, the Tarantulas, or D, the Towers. Uh, you know, going back, obviously the alliteration really helps. The Towers just makes too much sense. I, I, I seem to re- recall that there was a time where it was in dispute like recently in the last five, ten years, the actual names that were on the list and the towers wasn't on the list. But how could it not be? Uh, it just only makes it only makes sense. The beavers, my God, why is that on there? But it sort of makes <laughs> sense as well. And then so this is a Toronto, the Toronto only one. Uh, the yes, Toronto that's correct. Only, yep. yes. Just the Raptors. So why, would the, so why would the Grizzlies be on there? Um, yeah, and we are looking for. The one that was not on the final list. Yeah. Beavers, Grizzlies, Tarantulas, Towers. I'm not calling a friend with this one. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm very confident that they would have just as little knowledge as I do because I've got nothing in my brain that's really standing out to me. I'm going to eliminate Tarantulas. Okay. I kind of think that's on there. I, the Towers makes too much sense. For some reason, the Grizzlies is on there as well. I'm going to go with Beavers. The Toronto Beavers wasn't on the list. I'm sorry, the Beavers was on the list. Uh, it was the Towers. You, nah! you, you, you sort of got to it. You were talking it out early, yeah. and you were like, I was like, wow, you were right. I mean, it was somewhere in your brain there. The Towers, though yeah. it had been mentioned before as a possible name for the, for the Toronto team, wasn't on the final list. In the mid-'80s, Cavaliers owner Ted Stepien, he wanted to move the team to Toronto and call them the Towers. Um, so there was talk of that in the mid '80s, but your final list here, the ten names: Beavers, Bobcats, Dragons, Grizzlies, Hogs, Scorpions, T Rex, Tarantulas, Terriers, and Raptors. <laughs> yeah, no towers. Hogs. I, I they know, went with Toronto Hogs. hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the crowd. All right. Well, you have one question remaining here before the final rapid fire speed round, and you have one lifeline left, and that is the phone of friends. So here we go. Question number seven. The 1995 NBA expansion draft was held on June 24th. The Raptors and Vancouver Grizzlies alternated picks until one unprotected player had been taken from each of the existing 27 NBA teams. As you can imagine, the talent pool was mediocre at best. But one former All-Star was selected in that expansion draft. Was it A, Greg Anthony, B, BJ Armstrong, C, Jerome Kersey, or D, John Sally? I think I know the answer, but I got to call a friend. You're, you're going to call a friend? Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, using get the lifeline? Line. Yeah, why not, why not use it? It's a good way to look at it. All right. We're calling my friend and yours, Dave Set. Call him Sets. See if he picks up, though. <laughs> yeah, the guy works a lot. No, he doesn't. No? He's always at the gym. Yeah. Dave. Hey. What's going on at Skeets? What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I won't, uh, I won't keep you long here. Um, I've got your buddy Tass on the line. He's, uh, he's doing a little trivia. And okay. he's, uh, he's stumped on this question. He needs some help, okay? So I'm going to read you the question, and you can uh, chime in with uh, what you think the answer is. I don't want you Googling over there, by the way, okay? 
Okay. Dave, the question is, the 1995 NBA expansion draft was held on June 24th. The Raptors and Vancouver Grizzlies alternated picks until one unprotected player had been taken from each of the existing 27 NBA teams. So as you can imagine, the talent pool was pretty mediocre. But one former All-Star was selected in that expansion draft. Was it A, Greg Anthony, B, BJ Armstrong, C, Jerome Kersey, or D, John Sally? I'm leaning towards Greg Anthony. Okay. Leaning towards Greg Anthony. Any particular reason? You just think he, he was an all-star? He was one of the better players that you can remember? Yeah. Can you name the other three again? Greg Anthony, BJ Armstrong, yeah. Jerome Kersey, and John Sally. I knew he wouldn't know this. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think the other guys made all-star teams. Yeah, either did I'm Greg Anthony. i Greg Anthony. Okay. Get him off. So, so him okay, Tass. I mean, you can't hear Tass, Dave, but he's angry with what you're saying. But um, well, well, we're gonna keep him on the phone here, Tass, for a second. Tass, you don't like um, you don't like where Sets is leading you with Greg Anthony, I assume. No, uh, mm. I, I believe only one of those four where, where made an All Star team. He's where are you leaning? One Tass? of those four made an All Star team, and it's Jerome Kersey. And there was a weird situation. The Raps picked him, and they didn't didn't even keep him around because they couldn't pay him enough. Going with Jerome Kersey. That's incorrect. What? BJ? BJ oh. Armstrong, guys. Uh, he was voted a starter in the 1994 NBA All-Star oh, game. That. Yeah, that year where no MJ was there. And uh, the Raptors picked BJ Armstrong first in the expansion mm-hmm. draft, but he refused to go to training camp, and he was traded to the Warriors, and that's what got them back Carlos Rogers. Oh, uh, Seth. Sorry, man. Sorry, hey. Man. Hey, don't apologize to me, man. Just apologize to Tess. He lost a lot of money. He's <laughs> he's gonna be giving you a call. He's gonna need some help. It's crazy. Where's my apology, Seth? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Dave. I'm gonna let you get back to work, buddy. All right. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> All right, friends. Uh, 0 for two here in the Who Wants Some oh, Trivia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a I, tough one. I had forgotten about BJ in that whole Chicago. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Isn't that so weird? So so weird. All right. Well, that's it for the main questions. How many points does Tass have, JD? Tass has a grand total of five points, but you have the chance to add more points in our final speed round. You're going to have 45 seconds to give as many correct answers as possible. You'll score one point for each one. All right, Tass. We will not start the timer until after I'm done reading the question. You need a couple points here to beat your man, Lily. all right? Mm, Good, Good luck. Okay. Most diehard Raptor fans know a majority of the guys who played in the first ever game. Mighty Mouse, Alvin Robertson, Carlos Rogers, John Tabak, and so on. But what about the other team? How many New Jersey Nets players from that inaugural 95 game can you name? Let's start the clock. Have at it, Tess. New Jersey Nets. Yinka Dare. That's right. I I gave you that one earlier on. You're right. Uh, Kenny Anderson. That's correct. That's two. Um... Now I'm struggling. I remember the big forward's name, but I don't have it on the... I'll give you a hint. There, you know, the Raptors drafted Damon Stoudemire. A lot of people wanted... Uh, the Raptors fans oh, wanted... Ed O'Bannon. Ed O'Bannon coming off the bench. That's right. Um, stuck on this forward's name, but I don't know it. A couple, um, yeah, a couple big forwards. Like, strong guys. Yeah. Big, strong yeah. dudes. Yeah, in fact, one of them would be great at composting. He's a brown man. Yes, What's yes. his name? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, that is it. That's uh, it. I was looking for PJ Brown. Oh, I would have <laughs> never gotten there. Um, okay, so oh, you who's got the other big guy. Yeah, you who's got three correct. First off, you got Kenny Anderson, Inkadare, and Ed O'Bannon. Um, so that's great. Yeah, Armin. That hint. Armin Gil- Gilliam. Yes. Yes. I, mean, I, was, I was thinking Armin Tellum. For yeah. Some yeah. Armin. Oh, the uh, Arn Tellum, the, uh, the former agent. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're trying to get yeah. there. Uh, P.J. Brown, as I said, Kevin Edwards also started. Then you had Rick Mahorn, uh, Jason Williams, not the white chocolate one, Vern Fleming, Chris Childs, which actually blew my mind, mm. uh, Gerald Glass, and Rex Walters. I mean, it got pretty tough near the end there. But uh, you got three, and, and what does that bring him up to, J.D.? Brings him up to a grand total of eight points. Wow! wow. And he's number one on the leaderboard. Amazing. Surpassing Lili's six. Your task, you're, you're the best to ever play this game right now. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, 
Can't wait to be up there for at least a month. <laughs> <laughs> These questions actually take a lot longer than that. Special thanks uh, to Tass, of course, for playing. Tassie, thank you so much. Thank you. Got to thank our scorekeeper, JD. Excellent, as always. Great thanks to, to Sets for picking up the call. Big thanks to Basketball Reference for inspiring a few of the questions. And thank you so much to the world champion, Toronto Raptors, for existing. We'll catch you next time on Who Wants Some Trivia?